guardian station soon. I guess that's one. I just want our frame so I can see what I'm doing. I know. That's why I almost feel like it it was shift it's it's this way. Do you know what I'm saying? It needs to go this way. It needs to it's like this needs to be propped out. I, I, I need to do that. Twinkle, twinkle, neighbors. Welcome to the 2020 Beekman 1802 Holiday Marathon. Now, for those of you who may be new to Beekman 1802, we started broadcasting our marathons uh, many years ago, a long time ago, as a way to show the behind the scenes as our little company gets busy during our busiest time of the year. Now, throughout the years, the marathon has always been a 24-hour production. Oh, that was my line. That was, yes, go ahead. <laughs> but, <laughs> but this year, to celebrate our 12th year in business, 
<laughs> and to stay safe during COVID. We'll be coming to you live from Sharon Springs for 12 consecutive nights. So grab your dancing shoes because tonight is Dancing with the Stars. That's just a clue because it's Beekman 1802, 12 years of Christmas, day four. That was really awful dancing. Um, I think Ellen can just go ahead and retire now. Um, <laughs> what do you guys think, right? <laughs> no, you, Let's just yeesh. kick her out. Um, yeah, that, so tonight is a very special memory. Now, the Dancing with the Stars was a clue, but there's an overlap between Dancing with the Stars and another very special time in our lives. It's a little thing called the Amazing Race. And for those of you who are just tuning in, Every uh, day we're doing the 12 years of Christmas and every day we're recapping one specific moment in the history of Beekman 1802 because we've been in business for 12 years now. And so and tonight we are looking back through time to talk about our time on The Amazing Race. Now let's talk a little bit about how we got on The Amazing Race. That's right. Well, we were, um, you know, yes, we'll tell this story <laughs> and then I just want to kind of tell you how the Amazing Race changed our lives in you know many many ways. Yes. But we were doing a cookbook signing uh, for our very first cookbook, the Beekman 1802 Heirloom Dessert Cookbook, and we were out at the Santa Monica Public Library and we had just given a talk, and we were signing everyone's books. There were maybe like 200 people there, yeah. and the very last person in line um, came up to us and we were signing her book. And her name was Sandy, and we're like to Sandy. Um, and, and she said, you know, um, I love your, your show, The Fabulous Beekman Boys. Every, um, every Thursday night, yeah. my next door neighbor comes over and um, we watch the show together. It's like our bonding time. And you know, this, uh, this woman, Sandy, was probably in her late 70s yeah. maybe. And, she's, and so our thought was, oh, these two you know, older ladies and they're watching our show. We thought it was and really it's like sweet that they'd be watching time. the show together. And, and then, then she, she said, said my, My next neighbor. Door neighbor is the president of CBS Reality TV. So Brent, without missing a beat, he said, then why aren't we on The Amazing Race? Duh. And, uh, and she said, I'm going to tell her. And we, honestly, we thought nothing of it because we thought, she, how is this woman having, you so know, watching you know, our show? How does she know the head of CBS? But it turns out the head of CBS, her husband, CBS Reality at the time, her husband was very ill, had a, had a terminal illness. And um, she would go over to Sandy's house next door because she was a caregiver just to kind of, you know, relax and they would watch our show and get her mind off of the troubles for the moment. And so we literally got back to the farm and two days later the phone rang and I picked it up and someone said, hi, we're calling from The Amazing Race. We heard you wanted to run the race. And that's how we got on The Amazing Race. And Brent race. said yes and I said no way. And Brent said yes. and Because he's much, much older than me and he didn't think he could do it. <laughs> but, it was... <laughs> But An interesting trip. It was, and here's the thing. We never thought we would win, but we wanted to, of course. Um, but at that point in our lives, we had, um, you know, we were struggling to get the business up and running. Um, and, you know, I don't know if you realize this, but it's really hard to start a farm, start a business when you have no money and a million dollar mortgage on the property. Oh my God, it was. And we just could not get ahead. I remember, no. I was going back and forth to the city because I had a freelance job. We lived then. apart for we about five apart years. For about five years going back and forth. We only saw each other on the weekends. And so when we signed up for the Amazing Race, we're like, well, if we can only win this, Josh can move to the farm full time and then we can really get the business up and running. And we won it. it was, we hadn't, I we mean, never thought we'd win it. No, we absolutely, honestly, never thought we'd win it. We went into it thinking, okay, well, this is an amazing commercial for the business. You know, we're like, we made the t-shirts that said, I don't know if you remember, but it, you know, they said Fabulous Beekman Boys. Um, and we made sure everybody on the race called us Beekman Boys because we're like, we, you know, this is a commercial, you know, CBS has 11 million viewers every night. We're, we're gonna, we said if going out on the first round would not be great. Um, but we said if we can just make it to halfway, halfway, we'll probably get all the, all the marketing value we can out of the Amazing Race. And then halfway through... Josh wanted to quit. I didn't. Like I, he literally did well, at times. You were like... There were times when I was like, I, you know, it might, be, <laughs> it might be nice to go sit in a resort for the rest of the race. Um, <laughs> but, but we didn't. We, we held we, on. We kept going and for, for some reason we just couldn't lose. Everybody always says, how do you win the Amazing Race? I say, by not losing. That, and that's, and isn't, um, that, isn't that the moral of life? You don't lose by never giving up. 
You just keep going, no matter what life slings at you, just keep making your way and through And I have a very special memento that nobody has ever seen. That's right, so on ever. The Amazing Race, you're never allowed to take any of the Amazing Race clues or anything that you see on the race, they always ask you to hand them in at, at the end. At the end of every leg, you have to give everything back, whatever money you have left over from the leg, any you know, paperwork, any clues, anything. Are we gonna get in trouble for this? I, I think it's, I mean, this was season 21. Okay, because I think they, they're on season 32 If they want now. the money back, it's long spent. Oh, yeah. um, we'll tell you how we spent it. We'll tell you how we spent it. But anyway, actually, I found this in our suitcase when we got back, and this was the final clue on the, um, the final challenge on the amazing race, the one, the winning challenge, and it's all beat up because at that point, because well, it was in our suitcase, and remember our clothes were soaked. Should so I read the clue? Up. You want me to read it? You want to read yes. it? Yes. Uh, there. So the clue, you open it up, boom. And it says, who has a way with words? And that was where Josh had to figure out hello and goodbye in all the languages and run the flags well, up the flagpole. I think it said it, doesn't it, on the inside? Oh, well, it elaborates, but that's yeah, too long says, to read. Yeah, every greeter you met at the pit stop has said hello and goodbye in their native language. Raise the flags with the words that were the equivalent of hello and goodbye under the flags of the nine countries. This was at the UN. Once you have raised all of your flags correctly, you will receive your next clue, which was go to the finish line. That's and right. this was it. That's the actual clue. And even like as we were in the cab heading toward the finish line, we still thought, oh my gosh, those Chippendales are, they're probably in the cab right <laughs> behind us. We were so petrified because there was so much riding on the line for us because we, as we said, we'd been living apart for five years. We didn't know how much more strain our relationship could take. We didn't know how long we we're gonna to continue to be able to hold on to the farm while still investing to try to grow the business. Um, and then we won the million dollars. Yeah, that's the prize for, Winning the amazing well, race after it's a million taxes, it's, uh, dollars, but after taxes, it's less than half. Yeah, particularly in New York State, you get less than half of that. So we came home with like what four hundred and eighty thousand, right. a lot of money. But what that let us do, which was wonderful, was we were able to buy the building that we're sitting in right now. Which we completely renovated this mercantile because before we were just renting a little store down the street, um, and we bought we bought this building. We said we're going to put the money right back into Sharon Springs, right back on Main Street. We got to pay our mortgage down a little bit, um, bought this, and opened the store. So that was our, our clue, is that we would, oh, you know what, let's talk about, uh, before we play this video, um, so in Sharon Springs, while the race was going on, every week, Megan would throw a party. You met at, her earlier on one of the employee uh, memory yeah, flashbacks. Yeah, she's a good friend, Megan. She, she would throw a party, and anybody in Sharon Springs could come to her house and watch that episode. Now, it was... Every week they would pile in the living room. I mean, and everybody would bring a dish. We could never go because we knew that if we went, we would. We went some of the nights when we, we were We went around. two nights, yeah. but towards the end we wouldn't go because we knew we would give away the secret. Nobody had any idea. Megan, nobody would work with my mom. Nobody had any idea. Because you're not allowed to. You're not to tell a lot yeah, to tell anyone. The, the show finishes taping and then you have to wait about five months before it completely airs. You can't tell a soul because if, you, if any leak is traced back to you, you have to forfeit the winnings. So it was so sweet, the entire town, the finale, of course, it was the final three. It was us, the Chippendales, and uh, the... Uh, 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 Trey and Lexi. Trey and Lexi. And they're all in Megan's house. And then Megan, who was in the kitchen, she was actually fixing snacks for people when the finale came on, and she heard this roar, and she got some video of it. Listen to it. So that was literally the moment when all of Sharon Springs found out that, that I, I think half their the, home team had run the, won the race. I think half of the village was in Megan's house that night. I think I, she, she had like five TVs going in different rooms, um, but it was really wonderful. There's a picture of everybody right there, the exact moment that we ran into that finish that was line. The, that was actually the picture that was in the, the, our local paper. Um, and you know, it was such a special moment because not only did it change our lives because we got to pay down the mortgage, which allowed Josh to move up to the farm full time. We got to build our flagship store. And not only did it change our lives, but it really did change the fortunes of the town because it brought so much more attention to Beekman 1802. Beekman 1802 got to continue to grow and flourish. And as we grew and flourish, lots and lots of people in Sharon Springs got to grow and flourish too. Um, so we are forever grateful for the opportunity to run the Amazing Race. It changed our lives. And you know what? 
I do want, I do want a, a little shout out to Sandy, who um, is an angel now. She's, she's passed on. She was an original neighbor. For but sure. we were able um, to go back to California. Um, we had another trip out there for another book signing. And uh, Sandy was in the crowd. Sandy was the woman that, that made it all happen, that talked to her neighbor. And uh, we were able to, to call her out of the audience and bring her up and thank her, thank her, thank her for changing our lives and really the lives of all Beekman neighbors because we wouldn't be going without that. So That's right. She's up there twinkling right now. Thank you, Sandy, from, on behalf of all Beekman neighbors. All right. So you know every night of the 12 years of Christmas, we have a very special star guest. Um, and tonight's guest is someone that um, ran with us on The Amazing Race. And we have the most... Um, how can we say it? Like, we're just in awe of this person. Yeah, I mean. Because not only was she on The Amazing Race, not only was she on Dancing with the Stars after The Amazing Finalist. Race and got to the, the she final She was a runner up. Yeah. Um, and uh, not only is she a bronze medalist Paralympic a snowboarder. Not only is she a New York Times best-selling author, not only has she started her own charity. Not only not does only she do she, Oprah shows. Not only has she been on tour with Oprah. Do you guys know who we're talking about? The one and only really Amy Purdy. Inspirational. Amy Purdy. And, and Daniel. Her now husband, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for being here, Daniel. Yeah. Course. Now we I don't think we've talked to Daniel since the Amazing Race, which was in 2013, 2012. I know. It's, I know, I forgot what year we did that. Actually. 2012. <laughs> I know, it was a long time ago. Yeah, 2012. Well, you, you still look great, Daniel. Yeah. You, you both look great. Now I have to ask you, because we're, we're, we have a lot to talk about, but uh, since you're both here, I have to ask you, and I'll tell all the people who are watching, that when you're running the Amazing Race, you don't get to see the other teams really before the start line. Like you don't get to talk to them. There's very minimal interaction. And so the first time that we actually had any clue about Amy and Daniel and what their relationship was, we were on the plane to China I believe it was the plane to China, and they were sitting several rows behind us. And I heard Amy telling her story um, about, you know, how she had meningitis when she was a teenager, which subsequently meant that she um, lost both of her legs, and like how she had to come back from that. And I remember saying to Josh, okay, not only is she in this incredible survivor, but she's also bionic now too. Like, how can we ever <laughs> win this like, race? We're up against the bionic couple. But um, it really was a special time. Now I have to ask though too. Go, ask. What was your first impression of us? Uh oh. <laughs> oh my gosh! I mean, you guys. Well, first of all, I not only fell in love with just you guys, but I I loved. You lived my dream, which is you have a goat farm. <laughs> and I've always said I want a goat farm because I love the idea. You can make so much from goat's milk, skincare, and like goat cheese. And so I was actually really, um, I was like, not, I was envious of the work that you guys did. And also, I mean, we fell in love with you guys. I mean, you're, you're sweet. But, you know, we, I feel like, we did get to know each other a little bit on the airplane, but it's like the minute the plane landed in oh. Shanghai, were we in Shanghai? Yeah, the minute yeah. the plane landed in Shanghai, you know, we were off, we were all just running and, you know, um, kind yeah. of, I guess, running by the seat of our pants. You we know, were. Point, so. <laughs> did, didn't you hate the worst moments for, for me were on the plane with other teams and the minute before you get off and everyone's trying to jockey and get out of the plane and you run. I hated that. Hated it. Yeah. I mean, we had a little bit of a game plan. You know, we were we were trying to, you know, we used the fact that I had two prosthetic legs as much as we could to our advantage. So we'd work our way up to the front of the plane. And then the plan was we'd get in like a cart because we're like, I've got a disability. And they'd put us in a <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Did that work? Customs, and then we jumped to through the handicap line yeah. in customs and we get through, you know, we weren't, we kind of got ahead of everybody. That was the, like the one advantage we had was actually kind of getting ahead of everybody. Well, that's why we never saw you. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I hated it because not only was there just so much anxiety about trying to get off the plane with, you know, all the other people on the plane, 
but I hate attention. So like running through the airport, like with your backpack on and everything, like I, I was just mortified by okay, it. Okay, the guy who's wearing a sequin jacket says he hates attention. Well, that attention. was then, that was a long time ago. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> just, yeah. You love that, Daniel? Because <laughs> everybody knew exactly what it was. They did, yeah, that's true. Well, teams running through the airport. They're like, okay. they're like, amazing race, amazing race, amazing race. Now I have a question, sure. it'll be a last amazing race question, then we'll go into something else. But um, <laughs> now you you went out of the amazing race before, so you did, you did way way better on Dancing with the Stars. But tell me, what what's it, when you when you went to the resort, because the whole rest of the race, when Brent was like, come on, we can do it. I'm like, but I think everybody else who's out is getting free drinks at a resort. Now, oh, yeah. were, you, we were, were you getting free drinks? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, well, first of all, I I always call it the amazing vacation that we never wanted because it was incredible. I mean, we wanted to be on the race, right? So yeah. everybody who would come into the resort, they were getting kicked off. Everybody would come in so bummed out, but it was an absolute party. Like before you knew it, you were just like, what? all we did was party. They were bummed for about the uh, first 24 hours maybe the first day yeah. and then they realized what we were doing there which was getting massages swimming oh. pool, <laughs> eating four meals a day being served cocktails <laughs> we, were, extravagant. we were getting at least two massages a day private oh. chef, eating whatever i mean thai food because we were in thailand that's we were all oh chefs the best thai food and ever. we weren't oh. in a hotel we were in a private resort so it was just us and we they would ship in alcohol every day <laughs> and we'd have parties and you know oh dining God. people and there may they or should may not be photo evidence of that entire time <laughs> yeah, i was gonna say they should film that share, like <laughs> yeah oh that'd be God. good tv boy so that's actually, kind of a toss-up one million dollars. <laughs> yeah, but then you turned around and like really showed the world what was possible with with a dance the dance with the stars. The stars. I and, mean, that was amazing. And, and, and that's why your that's where your athletic ability really shows. Oh my through. goodness, Amy! We just posted. Someone on YouTube had done a clip of all of your dances, um, and we posted on our Facebook page today. And I was just looking back through them. Amazing, like just mind blowing. Now tell people, tell people a little bit about that experience and how the Dancing with the Stars, you know, transformed you yeah. in your life. Well, you know, it's so funny is when uh, when we did the Amazing Race, you know, you you do a contract and all of that, and I remember the producer saying, "Well, we don't want you doing uh, Dancing with the Stars someday or something." So I was kind of it, the contract lasted for a couple of years. And here, and I remember saying, I would never do Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> <laughs> I said, because I've got two prosthetic legs. Are you kidding me? Like, how would I do Dancing with the Stars? You don't have to worry about that. And then a few years later, all of a sudden, Dancing with the Stars came knocking on the door. And um, and I actually had to go back to the producers at the Amazing Race. And they were like, oh, absolutely, you can do this. Oh, so wonderful. They, oh. Yeah, so they kind of helped because the contracts were overlapping. But um but when I did Dance with the Stars, I mean, honestly, I didn't know what to expect. I'd never even watched the show before, really. Um, I never knew when I would watch the show, I'd see people crying like it was the hardest thing they've ever put themselves through. But before I knew it, I was on stage dancing the cha-cha-cha, and it was the hardest thing I've ever put myself through, <laughs> um, especially having two prosthetic legs. I mean, I went on, I, I almost didn't do it. I was terrified that I was going to fail on live TV TV, and and I, I thought people are going to be watching me to see what the possibilities are with prosthetic legs and what if I can't even do this? I mean, um, so I, it, it, it was a huge challenge. I, I kind of, I, and in fact, I was competing in the Paralympics just 72 hours, that was in Russia, just 72 yeah. hours before the live first Dancing with the Stars show. And um, the other dancers had about three weeks to prepare and I only had three half days to prepare. So I would snowboard in the morning for four hours and then I would dance for three hours each night. And then I just jumped on a plane after I um, won my medal in Sochi and flew to LA and, and felt like I was kind of just shoved out on the stage and all of a sudden I was dancing. And, um, you know, every single week was just so challenging because of my legs, we really didn't know each week 
what feet I was going to wear. There are no feet that are made for the cha-cha. There are no feet <laughs> for the salsa. So we had to get creative and, and I'd wear my running blades or my swimming feet and all of this stuff. It was almost like for two and a half months, we were just, you know, throwing things together and trying to memorize the dance and then going out on stage and just crossing our fingers and just, it, you know, by the end, being able to make it to the end and coming in second place was way more than I ever expected. And okay. Just and just doing it so beautifully. I mean, you really know how to dance. and I, Yeah, the precision was the amazing. Dance. But yeah. let me just say, I find it tragic that there are not cha-cha prosthetics. And uh, I really <laughs> think... Well, now... Mm -hmm. We need to start to, that. But, you know, yeah. what we ended up doing that worked really well, especially for the cha-cha, was... Um, we, I ended up dancing in almost like mannequin feet. They're literally just made of foam and wood and the ankles don't move at all. Oh. But I took the shoes off and I just balanced on the balls of my feet with no shoes, no heel. And it allowed me to um, bend my knees and also straighten my leg out and just get this really cool movement. So the movement never came from the feet. But the feet, um, just getting the different types of feet that I had kind of allowed me to get the movement in my body. So, and I just oh want gosh. everybody who's listening to just think yeah. about that for a minute. So you're having to learn these dances that you've never done before, and you're doing it without having the sensation of your feet on the ground. Like yeah. Amy couldn't even feel like what the ground felt yeah. like when she was trying to learn these steps. That is incredible. Yeah. Like it, it's, it's yeah. incredible. Mind-boggling. Now, um, <laughs> Daniel, what was it like watching Amy compete every week? Oh, it was every week. It was the proudest moment. <laughs> it was really just so impressive and cool. And to watch the process kind of from behind the scenes and watch, you know, them go through trying to figure out what foot works. And then actually have, once they figured that out, then practicing the, the dance. I mean, it was a real, it was a real process. And, and every single time it was, um, I, I, I legitimately would fall in love again because it was just oh, so cool no. just, to, oh. just to see her doing that. Yeah, it really was. Did you just hear everybody in the whole audience go, oh. Just go, oh. <laughs> now, do you, now, do you guys ever dance together post-dance? Like, does Amy teach yes. you any dances? Yeah, we, our dancing looks a little different, though. <laughs> it's way better than Derek's. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like right hours here. at the top of the show, probably. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't hold me to that. We, we had a really fun dance at our wedding that we choreographed that turned out really great. Oh. Yeah. I'm not, Is that I'm on not a great dancer, but I, I'm all right. I like our, you know, we have our little, like, slow dance moments at <laughs> home with the radio on, and I think those are the most special dances of all, so... Oh, oh, oh my goodness. It's okay, I have another cute. question too about, and then we have something else to get on to, but you know, it's all about Twinkle Twinkle here um, this holiday season, because we wanted to spread Twinkle Twinkle throughout the holiday for people. We need it this year more than ever. So here's my question. All of those beautiful costumes with all the sequins, do you get to take any of those home? So um, CBS owns them. And, and what's crazy, you know, they're custom made. We help design them. So each week, that was one of the funnest parts is, each week we sit down and literally design our outfits with the designers and they make them and they're so sparkly. They're, they're so beautifully put together. There was one dance where it was, I got to design a wedding dress and they made it in that week and it was gorgeous. And, um, and so CBS owns them, but what I did is I was able to purchase a couple of them, just um, some from the most special dances that I did. I, I purchased those. We have them. You, we have one closet in the house where you open it up and it's all sparkles. Oh, <laughs> oh my God! We should all that, have a closet like that. We Everyone need a twinkle. Have a sparkle. It's a closet. twinkle twinkle closet. <laughs> um, okay, now yeah, can it you? Is a twinkle, twinkle closet. <laughs> can uh, you guys talk a little bit about the charity that you guys uh, co-founded and, and run? Because we're going to talk about that a little later tonight. But I want to give people an idea of. Because you've been, you've had this charity for a long time, so give people an overview of it. Yeah, I mean, we we started the organization in 2005. That was, you know, before we did the Amazing Race, um, before we really had much of a platform at all. But but we were passionate about snowboarding. That's a, that's how we connected in the first place. Is at, so I snowboarded before I lost my legs, and then I was on this mission to snowboard again because I was just so passionate about it. And I, I had kind of put these feet together and started snowboarding a little bit and flew to Colorado to on a trip with a few friends. And that's where I met Daniel. 
and he was also a big time snowboarder and um and then he's got a background in philanthropy so his mom has always worked for nonprofit organizations and kind of as our relationship developed so did this idea that we wanted to help other people have the resources to not just snowboard with disabilities but do all types of action sports we saw a lot of um support out there for athletes who did classic sports like running or swimming but there was very little support for action sports like mountain biking or wakeboarding or snowboarding so we started the organization in 2005 and um we gosh since then i mean we 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 pushed to get snowboarding into the paralympic games that's when i then went on to become a paralympic medalist we now are training athletes we've got how many athletes do we have up here this year? Almost 10. So we've got yeah. about 10 athletes that are up here this year training full time, hoping to make the US snowboard team for Beijing next year for the next Paralympic Games. And Daniel's the head coach. So we really, since 2005, have been housing athletes in our house, training athletes full time um, to be the best athletes they can be. They all have dis a, a disability of some sort. We work with wounded veterans. We work with athletes missing their arms, missing their legs, but basically giving them the resources to be the best athletes that they can be. And um, and also we've created kind of this pipeline to the Paralympic Games. So if they want to be a professional snowboarder, then here's the you know the pathway to get there. Oh, so, that's awesome. Oh, that, that is putting your passion yeah. into action for sure. And the name of the charity is Adaptive Action Sports. And um, it's, you know what, I, I, I love that word adaptive because I yeah. have never, I have never liked the word disabled because I, I, I find everybody different in their own way. And the fact that when you have a specific challenge in your life, be it, you know, a physical um, challenge or a mental challenge or anything, it's like the, it's the way you adapt around it that makes you the most in, the incredible human being you can be. Um, and I, exactly. I, I, I just think that you know that the charity is so worthwhile and so amazing. Well, we think that you're we think that you're both amazing and as we said when we met them they were just dating now they're married um, yes. and and you know Amy I we just were wanna, just dating when they met us well that's true that's true <laughs> yeah, we're yeah. just like them we're just like them um, I know Amy you've been very um, open about your recent health struggles um, you know um, you know, you had more complications with your legs and they had to go back in and do some more recent operations. For those people out there who are struggling with anything in their life, um, what, what do you think helps you mentally overcome those setbacks? Like what advice can you give to people before we leave you? I mean, gosh, I, you know, I think for me, it's just been knowing, first of all, in a weird way, kind of appreciating challenge because challenge is what's led me to where I'm at today. Had I have not lost my legs, in the first place, I wouldn't have gone on to have some of the best experiences in my life. I mean, really, that's what's led to me being able to speak or do Dance with the Stars or start this charity. And th those have been some of the most fulfilling moments of my life. And they came from some of the most challenging moments of my life. So now as I go into it and I'm facing a current challenge, you know, it's still challenging. It's hard. Um, nothing's been easy, but at the same time, I think I'm just reminded that, um, you know, sometimes the most beautiful things can come out of challenge. You just have to keep going and get through it. And so, um, yeah, I mean, I think it's just, it, it's, it's, you know, you change what you can change and control what you can control and, and, and what you can't control, you hand over and you do everything the best you can with what you have. So, even right now, you know, I'm not walking. I, I actually haven't walked in the last year and a half because of this injury on my left leg. But it's it's given me more time to be at home and to work on some other projects that I wasn't working on before. And it kind of helps me reimagine the possibilities moving forward. And so I know I'm probably talking in circles a little bit, but I would just say that, um, you know, for one, just to have grace with yourself we're all different. We all have challenges. We all have challenges and to just keep moving forward, take baby steps. And, you know, it's not about the outcome. We all want to get back to where we were at before, but I think it's about kind of stepping forward and, um, 
accepting, you know, accepting the present moment. So exactly. that's right. I, and adapting. You have to adapt. You have to adapt. You have to adapt. <laughs> Um, so where can people find you if they want to, to uh, follow more on your social media? So um, my Instagram, well, actually, my Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter are Amy Purdy Girl. Yeah. Uh, G-U-R-L. It's Amy Purdy Girl. Yeah. And, I love that. <laughs> yeah. And Daniel, you're at, well, we've got, we also have Adaptive Action Sports. Yeah. That's on Facebook and Instagram as well. Well, you can find me from either of those. <laughs> yeah. Daniel's like, don't look me up. I'm very uncomfortable and with every, it. Everybody, <laughs> if you haven't read her book, On Your on your Own Two Feet. Oh, it's a On My book. Own Two Feet. It's an amazing book. Yeah. Highly recommended. Definitely super inspirational. You're, you're, you're always inspirational. You're both inspirational. Guys, yeah, thank, you, thank you so much for the reunion. And thank you for Twinkle Twinkling with us. And when COVID <laughs> is over, when you're walking again, you can come over and take over the farm for as long as yeah. you want to. It's your goat farm. Yeah. You, I, I, I will be there. I okay. will be there. <laughs> we, have a snow, we have a hill you can snowboard down to. Yeah. yeah. Ah. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, guys. Right, have an amazing holiday season. Right. Twinkle, Thank twinkle. You. Wow. Thank how, you, guys. How, how awesome are they? I, they're the like perfect couple. And here's what's great about Amy is, you know, earlier this year um, when we launched our probiotic skincare line in Ulta, um, we were looking for not models. We didn't want to use models. We wanted to use people who had beauty of spirit and people who we said were living their life in full bloom. Um, and so Amy was the very first person that came up in my mind because she was going through her, you know, you know, obviously she's amazing anyway, but then was going through all of her um, current health issues, but still always had the most incredible spirit and just always optimistic and always figuring out how she's going to adapt to the situation, both short term and long term. And I'm like, Amy is a person who is living her life in full bloom. She, I mean, she definitely is. I want to say hi to some folks, Monica, Janine, Janice, Annette. Uh, Deborah Marks. Hi, Deborah. Uh, Marilyn. Deborah Regina. always twinkle twinkles um, when yes, she comes to the mercantile. Um, so wonderful people. Now we we're get running a little behind, and we got a lot of special things today. Ooh. Okay. Is, is it ten? As a matter of fact. Okay. It's time for. Hi, neighbor. That's right. That's it's it. our nightly trivia contest. Now, um, usually there's only one person that we call every night, but because we're talking about winning at life tonight with Amy Purdy and the Amazing Race. We're going to give 10 neighbors the opportunity to win tonight. Um, so we're going to call. Um, they, we have to keep them very short. So we're going to ask you your name, where you're calling from, and then we're going to get right into the question. If you don't have the answer to the question, we don't have time to chit chat. We're just going to move to the next person, OK? So we're not being rude. It's just that we have a lot of questions to get All through right. tonight. Are you ready? Um... Oh, where's the questions? Here. I'm going to give this call. I came up with all the questions earlier today. Who's the first person? This is, we're calling Heather. Uh oh. Will Heather be there? Is Heather watching? By the way, all these names are drawn randomly. If you sent a, a note to customer service at Beekman1802, Dot com saying you wanted to take part in the giveaway. Welcome to Verizon. Uh, oh. Heather, missed your opportunity. Heather, sorry. Back to the end of the line. Um, Who are we calling now? Mara? I didn't see who you pointed to. Well, we'll see, you'll see when, when she answers. We're calling Joan. What, maybe Everybody must be watching something else. Joan? Yeah, hey, I didn't know you were Hi, calling. Neighbor. You were calling Heather. Hi, neighbor. Hi, neighbor. Hey. It's Brent and Josh. You're live. I know. Oh, <laughs> All right. okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we have okay. to be very quick tonight. Okay, Joan, where, are you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wh where do you live? Uh, Winter Haven, Florida. Winter Haven, Florida, lovely area. Okay, here's your question. Um, what was the name of the first cheese that we ever produced? Oh, God. Um, I know it's black cheese. You got it. That's it. That's it, Joan. You got that it. That was the answer. It was that easy. OK, okay Joan, oh. what you won tonight was one of our fruitcakes 
and oh. a box of sugar plums. Oh, thank you. Listen, God bless you guys. I'm so excited to talk to you and I'm going to talk a lot, but we'll talk soon one day. Love All right, you. twinkle, twinkle now. Twinkle, Bye. twinkle, amen. All right, these are going out to Joan, made by our artisan Tony Dow. All right, there okay. was our first call. Now we've got t nine more to go, nine chances to win. Okay, I'm gonna go right down the list. Uh, okay, who, who is we it? are calling Mara. Okay. Hello? Hi, is this Mara? Hi, neighbor. Hi, neighbor. Hi, neighbor. How are you? We're good. We're great. Now, where are you calling from? Or where are we calling you West, at? Uh, West Piston, Pennsylvania. 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 All right, you ready for your question? I am. Okay. okay. Big tension. At the end of yesterday's show, what song did we sing with under? Oh my God. Um, okay, well you got the first, you, you got the first word right. Oh. <laughs> you said, oh my oh, God. Holy yeah. Oh, holy night. <laughs> you got it. Okay, and Thank you know you. what you won? What? You won the cookie jar. Oh my God, thank you so much. I really wanted that. Thank you so much, guys. Well, there you go. We don't have very many of these left, so you're getting one of the last ones. Under thinks there's treats in it. Look, Under's like, oh, you want me to sing again? <laughs> at the end of the show. End of the show. We sing at the end. Well, All right, congratulations, thank you. Joan. Twinkle, no, twinkle. That's Mara. Mara. Thank you. I'm Mara. So twinkle, have twinkle. Nice Bye -bye. You too. All right, next one. This oh is goodness, Kevin. People are doing so good. Who's this? This is Kevin. Okay, Kevin. Kevin, if you hear the phone ring, pick it up. Hello? Kevin? Hi, neighbor. Yes. It's Brent and Josh. You're live. Oh my God, hello. <laughs> Okay, where are you where where are you talking from? Louisville, Kentucky. Kentucky. Okay, were you watching the marathon last night? Yes. Okay, here is your question. What did Danny Seo use to make our cork flame starter? He soaked it in something. Uh, alcohol, rubbing alcohol. Yes. <laughs> okay. You won Four jars. You get the vanilla sugar pumpkin butter. You get the lemon curd. You get the goat milk caramel sauce. You get the peppermint fudge. I hope you're not on a I'm diet, Kevin. Talk. No, I love you guys. <laughs> well, we love you too, and we, we hope you enjoy the marathon and you keep twinkle twinkling, okay? Okay, thank you. All right, bye. Bye. Oh, he's got enough oh sweets God. for the whole holiday. So much giveaway. Okay. Oh, who's this one? Who's this? Janice. Let's see, we've talked to Pennsylvania, Florida, Kentucky. I'm not keeping track, so you got, you got the... I, I know, okay. wait, wait. Janice, Janice, are you there? Hi, neighbors. Hi, neighbor. Hi. Hi. Neighbor. Where Hi. are you? Where are you? I'm in Leroy, New York. It's not far from the Genesee Valley Country Museum where I met you guys before. That's yes. a beautiful outdoor museum. We love that museum. place. Okay. It's well, gorgeous. You, here's okay. your question from last night, okay? Okay. Every night of the marathon, we're making a wish come true. Now, yes. yesterday, we wrote a blank check to what organization? The Food Bank of Northeast New York. Yes! yes. Oh, we, she, got the, she even got the proper name. That's right, we underwrit the entire underwrote? year's, underwrote, underwrit, the entire year's <laughs> budget for the local food bank. And what you're going to win is yeah. a oh, bag a of the Beekman coffee roasted right here in upstate New York. Mm -hmm. And Yummy. you are getting this ceramic travel mug is, made by our artisan, Jasmine Crow. 
And what's great about this is it's ceramic. She hand turns the cup and it's got a rubber sippy on the top. It's beautiful. I see it. Oh, it's gorgeous. You're going to win both of those. We We're going to send them out to you. Are those online? These are, both of these okay. are available online, but you get them because you got the answer right. I saw that in the mercantile. It came to the first kindness workshop. Oh, wasn't the kindness workshop amazing? It was fantastic. Thank you so much for putting that together. Your team was wonderful. Oh, great. We're going to do six more of the kindness workshops next year. So uh, everybody who wants to participate, did you, you'll be a, a chance. Did you find yourself kinder after the workshop? I, I did. And then I got a little surprise in the mail that I mailed myself, right? I didn't even know it. That's right. <laughs> a, a note of kindness. All right. Well, you keep yes. twinkle twinkling, okay. okay, Janice? Thank you, Janice. Yes. Thank you. Bye -bye. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Bye-bye. Oh, I see that I recognize the next name on the list. These are great prizes that people are winning. I know. Okay, it's that end. Oh, by the way, Wait. when you're talking, I can't hear because the earpiece is in this ear, so that's why I'm ignoring you. Is that why? Yeah. What, why do you ignore me when you don't have an earpiece in your Huh? <laughs> okay. What? All right, we are calling Justin. Oh, Justin. We actually know Justin. He's been to Sharon Springs many times. I know, but I'm times. just going down the list in order, yeah. so nobody thinks we're playing favorites. Justin! We actually know Justin. He's been hanging out. Oh, turn your computer Hello? down or TV. Hi, neighbor. Oh, yeah, turn my TV down. <laughs> hi, Justin. You're live. Oh, hi, guys. How are you? Now, oh, tell everybody where you live. Oh, I live in Queensbury, New York. And okay. Tell, tell everybody how many harvest festivals you've been to and volunteered at. I have been, I have volunteered at seven. This would have been my eighth, but you know, obviously, you know, COVID. COVID. Blame everything on yeah. COVID. Okay. Here's I know. your it's crazy. Here, here's your question, Justin. Who made these boots for us? What kind of crystals? Oh, is it the Schwarzkopf? That's close enough. Close enough. Swarovski Crystal made oh, these Swarovski, boots for us. Yes. You got it, Justin. Close enough. Okay. okay. You, you know what you're going to win, Justin? What's it? What, 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 what? You are going to win one of the very last pounds of goat poop for this year that's in existence. <laughs> <laughs> so you you win this pound and you win the three specialty goat poops for the holiday season. Oh, that is so amazing. Thank you. So two pounds of poop are going to be mailed to you. Oh, thank you guys so much. I haven't even had the chance to get any yet. So this well, is very special. You're going to love a good poop, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Don't Justin. <laughs> All right, you keep twinkling. Have a great holiday, Justin. Oh, you too. Thank you. Thank you for sharing the kindness. Yes, you too. Keep spreading it. He is such a The nice kindness, guy. not the poop. He's such a nice guy. Okay. Uh, next, we're calling Christina. How many, wait, how many left, Brent? Uh, one, two, three, four, five. We're on the number six. Six. Yeah, what is this question? Oh, my goodness. You can't even read your own writing? Mm -mm, doctor's handwriting. Someone let's serve. Hello, this is Christina. Hi, Hi. neighbor. Hi, Hi neighbor. It's Josh and Brent. Hi, Josh and Brent. Twinkle, twinkle. Twinkle, twinkle. Oh, you're twinkle, twinkling already. <laughs> How are you doing? We're doing great. Now, where are you, where are you right, now, not right now? I'm in Troy, Michigan. And it, from my door to the mercantile door, it's exactly 500 miles. Have you oh. been to visit? Yes, I have. Oh, what did you think of the mercantile? Um, I, I didn't make it this year, but I love the mercantile, and I remember the original one in the Roseboro. That's that right. was just one room. Pre-Amazing Race. Yes. No. Okay, yes. were you watching the show last night? Of course I was. Okay, now, Brent, Okay, Brent, I, I got the question. You got the question? Yeah. Okay. Okay, do you remember last night when Nikki made that beautiful cheese board? Yes. What element did she put on the cheese board to make it super holiday twinkle twinkle? 
By the way, he put two the two baby goat ornaments. You yes, got it. I didn't think you, anybody would get that. I didn't think anyone would get that. And you know what you're gonna win? You're winning the know. two goat ornaments. Oh, thank you so much. That's fabulous. And let me find my pen. I don't know what I did with it. Here, I'm actually gonna autograph the box. You get when you get the box, it has the two ornaments in it, and I'm gonna autograph the box to you. So tell me that. Oh, thank you. Christina. Christina. To Christina. With a K. Christina with a K. Yep, got it. Keep twinkling. <laughs> I actually just finished making the um, a seat at a table recipe, the Sunday tomato sauce. Oh, oh Rosemary's Sunday tomato sauce. Isn't that delicious? Yes, it sure is. And it's Sunday. I'm wishing everyone a very Merry Christmas and a happy, healthy New Year. Oh, and the same to you. Thank and you keep you. twinkling out in Michigan. Thanks, Brent. Thanks, Josh. Thank you. Bye, neighbor. I'll bet you Ro Rosemary is having the Sunday sauce tonight, too. She, she probably has the is. Sauce. I hope she brings some leftovers. Um, all right, uh, next down the line. Oh, this is a fun one. Okay, a fun question, you mean? Yeah. Isn't it great? I mean, neighbors all over the country. It's incredible. Hi, guys. Hi, neighbor. Hi, neighbor. Hi, neighbor. Hi, Suze. Hi, How guys. Are you? I can't believe you actually called me. I miss you guys. I know. Now tell everybody where you're calling from. Enfield, Connecticut. Actually, you're calling me. Well, that's, that's right. True. That's right. It's <laughs> Don't pick on us, Susan. <laughs> I love you guys. You know that. And we love you too. And Susan has been um, to Sharon Springs many times. She, all, she brings the most delicious, delicious cookies. cookies. Um, and she's a nurse. And she has been doing incredible work. All right, Susan, I know you're working really hard, but did you have a chance to watch the show last night? I would not have missed it. Okay, here's your question. At the beginning of the show, were we drinking red wine or white wine? It's 50-50. I'm gonna say red. Yes, you got it. You got it. <laughs> Only because you're so oh, smart, that's Thank how you got you, it. Sue. And you know what you're going to win, Sue? You've got almost everything that we've given away so far, so I have to give you something that you probably you haven't been here to get yet. You're going to okay. win the new beanie. Oh, thank you. That'll keep me warm this winter. It will, and I hope you're wearing it the first time we see you after COVID is yeah, over. Yeah, I'm tell John I said I miss him this year. Well, he said he misses your Toll House cookies. <laughs> Hey, are you guys going to carry your oatmeal anymore? That is currently a discontinued product, but you never know when we're going to bring things back. That's true. Well, twinkle, twinkle, thanks for calling. Thank you, you keep Sue. twinkling too, Sue. All right, bye-bye. All right. Bye. Bye. All right. Um, next. Oh. Oh, this is a local area code. How, how, would, how many left? How are we doing on time? Oh, we're at work. We're good. We're back time. we got two minutes to for the remaining we got ones. three more questions. Hello. Hi, neighbor. Hi. No way. Way. Yes. Hi, Sue. Oh, my God. Now, Sue, where are we talk talking to you? Oh, I'm right down Route 20 in Albany. Albany? Oh. I saw the error code. Well, uh, you're a neighbor, like a real-life neighbor. Okay. Were I you am. Were you watching last night? I was. Okay, this is a hard question. You got a hard one. Oh, no. okay. okay, so last oh, night hard. when we uh, were doing a Team Beekman memory, the, the manager of the mercantile, Emily, told a story about her first harvest festival. And she said that she was so tired that when she got home, she ate for dinner an entire can of what? Yes, that's right. You were paying attention. Okay. I was. <laughs> you are going to win a copy 
of the Beekman 1802 Heirloom Dessert Cookbook. Do you have that already? No, thank you so much. Okay, so okay. let me autograph it to you. This is for Sue. To oh. Sue. Thank you. Stay sweet. Oh, thanks. All right, well thanks for paying attention and you keep twinkling, okay? Thank you, twinkle twinkle, bye. 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 See, everybody already knows the twinkle twinkle lingo. Well, then the next person is gonna have a really easy time. Let's well, see, is this a hard question? What I'm, I'm question? reading this question. Oh. You've been reading all the questions so far. Well, you're getting to dial all the numbers. I think giving away prizes is more fun. Ooh. Did I get the number right? Who is it? His name is Brent. Hello. Hi, neighbor. Hello. Hi, Hi Brent. Brent. It's Brent. Hi, Hi. So where where are you? Where are we calling you at? Albuquerque, New Mexico. Way Ooh. out in New Mexico. Albuquerque's beautiful. Remember we were there yep. a few years ago? Yeah, we Please love New Mexico. We, we took the high road to Taos. Oh, you guys did great. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right, were you watching last night? All right, so here's your oh. question. It's pretty okay. simple. What is the theme of this year's holiday at Beekman 1802? Twinkle, twinkle. That's right. <laughs> Good that job. Awesome. <laughs> okay, well, what can I give him? What can I give him? Well, you've got the... Wait, do you have kids? We have grandkids. Oh, perfect. We're going to autograph a copy of the precious little snowflake to them. Oh, that would be wonderful. They now, would love that. What are, what are their names? Uh, the little boy is two years old, and his name is Mason. M-A-S-O-N. Uh-huh. And the little girl is Ken, and her name is Serenity. S-E-R-E-N-I-T-Y. You, I'm gonna put Mason and Serenity, you are precious. Oh, they'll love that. Oh. That would be a nice surprise for, um, for Christmas for those hey. two little. Hey, take a picture of you reading it to them and post it on our Facebook page, okay? I sure will, I'll do that. All right, well you stay twinkle twinkly out there. You guys too, and you know I just got turned on to your products not too long ago, and I'd love to sell them in my small business here, oh. and every, all my clients are just in love with everything. The oh. shampoo, conditioner, I'm a hairstylist here in Albuquerque, so. Do you already uh, sell them? No, I just, I actually just emailed you guys yesterday uh, on your wholesale wholesale email part yep. to um, inquire about selling wholesale, but I've already bought a ton from you guys off HSN and then the other night off your website, so. Oh, oh well, great. Well, well, well someone from our team will contact you this week about um, wholesale for your salon. Okay, that'd be great. Yeah, my last name is pronounced Lavagne. It, it means the vineyard. Oh, Lavagne. Oh, oh, how so wonderful. Cool. That's a and nice name. the same name, Brent. I've yeah. never met a Brent that wasn't incredibly intelligent. I've just met the one. <laughs> well, I've never met a Brent ever. Oh, wow. Until <laughs> now. Well, here well, we go. We're in the club. Thank you so much, and have a wonderful holiday season. Keep twinkling. You guys, too. Thank you so much. All right, bye-bye. All right, one that was, last that gift. Was like, that was our prize. We just got an account. That was like a cold call. I know. Wow. <laughs> How many people get a cold call and get an account, right? And just one call. Okay, one more neighbor okay. trivia. Who's this? Tracy? Tracy. Okay. Uh, what do I have to give? I sent the big prize? Oh, yeah. I hope she gets it. <phone rings> Fingers crossed. Oh, what's the question? I got it. Oh. Hello. Hi, neighbor. Hi, Hi, Tracy. Hi, Tracy. Oh my gosh. It's, it's Brent and Josh. You're live. 
Oh my gosh, I'm freaking out. <laughs> well, I hope you're not freaking out too much to get this question right because the, the prize is a $100 gift card to Ulta. Oh my gosh. Okay, okay, okay are you ready now, for this? Okay. All right. Ugh. Now, Tracy, what is the name of our signature product at Ulta Beauty? It makes, oh. it makes your skin not blossom, not glow. It makes your skin, it's, um, we've got to help her. Uh, no, we have to go down the list. Oh, no, we have it's, to. Now, it's have you, not at my local Ulta, so I don't know. Oh, it's not at our local Ulta. Well, when you go in to spend this card, Okay. You better tell them to get Let's give thing. another prize. Okay, yeah, well, okay, we'll give you a backup prize. Just to okay. be a good neighbor. Um, if it's not our local Ulta, it's not gonna do her any good anyway. Well, that's true. She um, can spend it on their website, though. Okay, so another cookbook? Should, yeah. Let's do the cookbook. Let's do... A seat at the table cookbook. Do you like to cook? Oh, I do. I love you guys. Okay. I love your products. I cook all the time. Okay, so right. we're... Uh, well, you have to get a question, though. We can't just give her the book. No, no well, the, the, she's got the book. We, All okay, right. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Josh is feeling very, very kind today. <laughs> All right. Oh. Thank you. We're, run, Brent, oh we're running short gosh. on time. Well, okay. When you, you enjoy that cookbook and cook a great dinner for everybody and invite them to your table, okay? Okay, I will. Uh, All right. Keep twinkling. I'm so excited. <laughs> Bye. Thank you, guys. I love Bye. you. You Me too. Too. Twinkle, twinkle. Okay, we got to give this big prize away. Um, we finished early the other night, so we can run over a few minutes. Okay, this is Nicole. Nicole. Okay, Nicole. Now everyone's rapidly Googling products at Old Pipe from Beekman. I know. Hello? Hi. Hi, neighbor. Hi, neighbors. Hi, Nicole. It's Brent and Josh. Well, okay, so it's our last us. caller did not win the prize for the question. So you, this is your chance for the big prize, which is a $100 gift certificate to Ulta Beauty. Where, you know, they carry our entire line of probiotic skin care. Now, do you know, what is the name of our signature product at Ulta? Yes. Bloom cream. Yes. <laughs> yes, you got it. Now, do you have an Ulta near you? Do they have the Beekman display? Uh, I th they have a small one, yes. Good. So when you go in there, you take out your $100 and you'll say, I'll take it all, okay? <laughs> Thank you, guys. All right, you keep twinkling. Thank you, Nicole. You too. Thank right. you. Have right. a good holiday. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Oh, how oh, fun. That was good. That was a lot of neighbors. Okay, now that was special. Tomorrow night, it only goes back to one opportunity. And if you want that opportunity, send your name and telephone number to customer service at Beekman1802.com. Um, we're softies. Okay. We're total softies. Um, okay. Next. We have to get to the Make-A-Wish. Oh, hey, it's time for a Team Beekman memory. Oh, yes, with Peter Maria, one. right? It is. Hi, my name is Maria Vogt, and I've been with Josh and Brenz since September 2009. I started as their director of resources, and then I set up their shipping department, and then I recruited him, and he took over the shipping department, and now I just help out at Christmas and whenever they need me. My favorite um, Christmas memory, actually I have two, but my very first one was when we had the Victorian Christmas celebration, and we had the whole town kind of come together and make a fantastic weekend that was incredibly memorable and lots of fun. And then the second, my second favorite memory is when we had Mindy Cohn come and she shared the Christmas week with us and she saw how overwhelmed we were. So she was like joking with us and keeping our spirits up and keeping us going because it was a very stressful Christmas. What about you? Yeah. What do you have? Well, that's that's a good memory, but yeah. my favorite memory is uh, when we were working late there in 2012, and they announced that they had won the Amazing Race. Oh yes. yes. And it was just fun that we were working together alone late at night, and and uh, it's just like that was an amazing thing that they won the Amazing Race. Yeah. And we got the 
queue cleaned yeah. out, and then all of, a, yeah. all of a sudden we found out they actually won, yep. and then, then um, it went. My name's Pete. Bunkers. I'm head of shipping, and I've been here shortly after you, but I don't remember exactly when I started. I think it was like 2010. Something like Something that, like yeah. That. Yep. Yeah. Happy, Happy holidays. holidays. Oh, so we had to so, pull their teeth to do that. I know, they don't, they don't love, like being on camera. So Pete and Maria are married, obviously. And, and Pete is the one who writes those little notes when you make your order and it ships from the Beekman he's the one that writes warehouse and Sharon Springs. And um, Maria says that she still has nightmares of that night that we won the Amazing Race. Because they were, they were working in, in shipping and packing. And every and time then, an order comes in, there's a ding that goes off on the computer. Ding, and so it was ding, just wrapping ding. up for the holiday season because it was like the, the middle of December, just wrapping up. And they just gotten the queue. She said they got the queue down to almost zero, the line of shipments to go out. And then all of a sudden we won. It was like a nine o'clock at night. And it was like ding, 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 ding. ding. It's, like, it's like a slot machine. Ding, 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 ding. Uh, but um, they, they soldiered through it and we still couldn't do it without it. Now, every um, day on the 12 years of Christmas, we are wishing upon a star and granting a wish for some charity. Um, and tonight, um, on behalf of all of the Beekman neighbors around the world, we are making a thousand dollar donation to Adaptive Action Sports, um, the charity that Daniel and Amy Purdy uh, created to help um, um, uh, help uh, a athletes who have ability issues uh, who who participate in adaptive sports. I could have said that more eloquently. That, yeah, I know that wasn't I'm great. rushed for time. Um, so. But a really wonderful chari charity. We encourage you to look it up if you can and and help support along along with all of us. That's right. All now, right. One last thing. Do you guys want to sing with under? Let's make it really really short. Really short. Okay. Under. You what, ready? What carol do we want? We didn't ask for a carol tonight. Under. Up. 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 Ready? Yes. Okay, what should we do? Uh, should quick. You, come, you sing. Oh, oh, I don't know. I'm on the spot, people, help me. Did we do Jingle Bells already? We did it. Uh, we wish you a Merry Christmas. Okay, one, just Ready? one okay. line. We, we wish, wish you a Merry Christmas. Christmas. We oh. wish you a Merry Christmas. She's like, some water. <laughs> she's, she's like, I wasn't ready okay, for this that. Was not people. your best under. But she's like, will, give me some honey and lemon. But we will practice. She might be losing her voice after she all this singing. She's like, I'm out of here. All right, we now, will practice and get do better next week. We have one little surprise night. tonight at eight o'clock. We're going to be on HSN. We have one quick little thing on HSN to twinkle, twinkle about. So and sometime between, I think between eight and eight thirty. Yeah, I think like around eight fifteen, and we're going to show up with our twinkle twinkle jackets and our twinkle twinkle boots. They're not gonna know what to make of it. And with under. All right, so we will see you, tune into HSN tonight, um, eight, between eight, 8 and 8.30, or join us back here tomorrow night at 6 p.m. for the next night of our holiday marathon. Until then, look up at the stars and twinkle twinkle. Twinkle, twinkle. everybody.